hey guys welcome back to youtube channel to go funny lungu back with another reaction video if you're new welcome if you're not welcome back uh today i'm going to be reacting to history's most famous quote cracked by a muslim so without wasting time let's get into the video meet the muslim who cracked history's most famous quote It's safe to say that there is no ancient writing system that has captured the attention of anyone who came across it the way Egyptian hieroglyphic writing has. For centuries, emperors, scholars, travelers, grave robbers, and many others have stopped by the walls of Egypt's enduring monuments to examine the mysterious symbols and images etched into the stone. Thinking about what they might mean it was in the 1820s that the French scholar Jean-Francois Champollion finally cracked the code, opening the door for the world to study and discover the incredible ancient history of Egypt in a way that had previously been impossible. But was Champollion really the first person to successfully decipher the Egyptian hieroglyphs? He certainly deserves credit for his groundbreaking achievement in Egyptology. But in reality, the process was underway almost a thousand years before Champollion was even born. Because at the end of the 9th century, an alchemist by the name of Abu Bakr ibn Washiya managed to decipher about half of all Egyptian hieroglyphic symbols. Considering the fact that there are a total of about 700 to 800 symbols to be cracked, this was an achievement that deserves recognition. Ibn Washiya's contribution was first brought to light in 2004 by the London-based Egyptologist Dr. Okasha Aldali, a professor at UCL's Institute of Archaeology. Muslims are urged in Quran almost every other page. There are 15 ayah in Quran which sound very similar to these ones here. All these ayahs encourage Muslims and entice them into looking around them on the universe and study what they see around them. So it's not just a natural curiosity of human beings that encourage Arabs to take interest in ancient Egypt. It is all these ayahs in Quran that entice and encourage Muslims to take closer look and study the world around them, the world of the ancient civilizations, ancient cultures, if only to establish the reasons of this mice and learn the fate and avoid it. If people were whatever wrong they did and they were destroyed as a result, the Muslims should learn the lesson and don't do the same. El Dali did extensive research on the study of ancient Egypt in medieval Arab Islamic writing and convincingly argued that not only did Muslims express a deep interest in the study of ancient civilizations, but that they could also correctly decipher Egyptian hieroglyphic script. But who was this Ibn Washiya? And why was he trying to decipher the hieroglyphs in the first place? The little information we have about his background is hopelessly confusing. He lived in Kufa, Iraq, during the Abbasid period, when the scholarly and scientific movement at the famous House of Wisdom in nearby Baghdad was in full swing, and he was an alchemist, which was probably in the hope of discovering the ancient Egyptians' secrets of alchemy that he was trying to decipher, their mysterious system of writing. He hacked other cryptic alphabets as well, 93 of them, in fact including alphabets used by the ancient Babylonian, Egyptian, Semitic, Hellenistic, and Hindu civilizations. He published his findings in a text titled Kitab Shawq al-Mustaham in which he gave a list of hieroglyphic symbols, their meaning, either as sounds or words, and their Arabic equivalent. Al Dali compared Ibn Washiya's conclusions on hieroglyphics with Egyptologists, modern day understanding of them, and found them to be accurate. The discovery of Ibn Washiya's contribution opened up the discussion of the role of classical Muslim thinkers in the field of Egyptology which had been ignored for centuries, partly because of a prevailing Eurocentric emphasis on history and partly because the relevant manuscripts were scattered and not accounted for. Just a few years after El Dali's revelations, some historians have already begun to recognize 
Ibn Washiyah as the first real Egyptologist in history. About a century later, another Muslim, Abu Rayhan al Buruini, would become the first Indologist in history. Al Dali emphasized that, because of their prejudices about Islam, Western scholars have been unfair to classical Muslim Egyptologists. Western culture misinterprets Islam because we in the West think teaching of civilizations before the Quran is shunned, which isn't the case, he said. They valued history and assumed Egypt was a land of science and wisdom, and as such they wanted to learn their language to have access to such vast knowledge. In reality, the research in Egyptology that classical Muslims carried out is even more reliable than the research of their contemporaries in pre-modern Christian Europe. Critically, they did not, unlike the West, write history to fit with religious ideas of the time, which makes their accounts more reliable, said Al Dali. They were also keen on the universality of human history based on the unity of the origin of human beings and the diversity of their appearance and languages. Ibn Washiya is just one example of the general attitude towards ancient civilizations that Dr. El Dali is describing in these statements. Shortly before Ibn Washiya's time, the famous Abbasid Khalif Al Ma'mun had visited Egypt while on a military campaign and had asked a sage, Ayyub ibn Maslama, to try to translate the fascinating hieroglyphics for him. Ayyub failed, but Ma'mun at least managed to force open the blocked entrance to the Great Pyramid at Giza that Taurus still use today. Jabr ibn Hayyan, who was widely considered to be the father of chemistry, was also fascinated by the hieroglyphs and the secrets they may hold regarding his field of research. Similarly, the 9th century Sufi saint Vahun Nun al-Misri was also deeply interested in the Egyptians' hieroglyphs. The classical historian Al-Mas'udi described him as one of those who educate the history of these Egyptian temple ruins. He roamed among them and examined a great quantity of figures and inscriptions. Vahun Nun al-Misri is said to have eventually deciphered the hieroglyphs, and there may be many other examples just waiting to be discovered. It is possible that another Muslim actually managed to crack the hieroglyphic code entirely, but even with the sources we have, we can say with confidence that Ibn Washiya, the first real Egyptologist, made the biggest contribution toward deciphering the hieroglyphs until Champollion finished the job nearly a thousand years later. Muslims today would benefit immensely from continuing to explore different cultural traditions and historical mysteries with the same spirit and zeal. I feel like for the longest time many things about Egypt in Egypt couldn't be understood by the um, outside world and it's good that someone actually decoded uh, those symbols you know it's really good to get an insight or have an idea to what they could mean that's always interesting but it depends it, it, it may be interesting to me maybe not for you but I always find such things interesting it's all about learning about someone and the best way to learn about someone is from maybe their history their perspective and whatever not something i noted in the video is it's actually true that uh history has been made in such a way to, to suit certain times and a lot of history has actually been buried for example i always give an example of africa as much as we learn about one or two african um histories we don't learn much about our own you know Yes, we learn about South Africa, we learn about maybe Zimbabwe, but other than those countries, I don't think we are exposed to much of our history. I have no idea about Liberian um, history, I have no idea about what not, but then you find that I'm aware of maybe American history, uh, Spanish history, and that should speak a lot. Many of our history has been put away to so that we focus on this eurocentric history you know 
and i don't know if you find a problem with that that's okay if you find a problem with that there's always books you can go back to check out those books see what it means see what you can learn always um be eager to uh, learn one or two things in this uh world in this life also another thing about egypt other than these symbols that we've been spoken about is uh, the pyramids how come we don't talk about how they were they came to be how they were erected you know how because even the internet when you google right now asking how they came to be built not much information is given and <clears throat> it seems like the people themselves of egypt back in the day were quiet to walk they didn't it's like i don't even know it's like they believed in something different that i don't think people of today believe in you know they were more advanced as others would argue and i don't know if you've heard about the debates concerning egyptians and what they believed in and all those things if you have please comment down below i'm always eager to learn from you guys and if there's anything you love me to react to let me know by dropping the name or the link down below i'll be more than glad to react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video